50 years ago, a groundbreaking movie hit the heights when How Green Was My Valley won five Academy Awards. Leonard Maltin joins us now, turning back the calendar half a century. Leonard. Well, John, How Green Was My Valley was an exceptional film that stood out in a year of exceptional films. After all, 1941 was also when Citizen Kane and The Maltese Falcon and a lot of other great films came out of Hollywood. But this one earned five Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Director, Best Cinematography, and Best Supporting Actor. It's a film that does not show its age, and the same might be said for some of its stars who reminisce with me about this beautiful picture. Green it was and possessed of the plenty of the earth. In all Wales there was none so beautiful. This is a film of great warmth and emotion, telling the story of a Welsh mining village and one close-knit family in particular. It had very special meaning to all of us. We knew the script was wonderful, and we were very thrilled to make the picture and with that great director, John Ford. And uh, it really is one of the great classics. Magnificent photography, magnificent performances by all of us. And this year is 50 years. Lifelong friendships were formed on this film for Maureen O'Hara, young Roddy McDowell, who played Hugh, and Anna Lee, who played the lovely Bronwyn. Roddy and I have been close, close friends ever since that. And he never, when he calls me up, he never calls me Anna. He says, uh, Bron, Bron, and I say, yes, Hugh. <laughs> and the same with Maureen. We've been great friends ever since then. I've always counted myself in immensely fortunate to the fluke that happened that I got into that movie. Also the fluke that I got to play the whole role, because that was not the original idea. The film was originally to have been a four-hour Technicolor epic, but the studio's board of directors saw no commercial value in the project and didn't like its pro-labor union sentiments. So the script had to be cut. The arrival in Hollywood of young Roddy McDowell inspired a solution to the problem of length. When we saw Roddy, he was so magnificent that we just said, we'll never let this boy grow up. And that solved the big length problem we had. It cut our script almost in half. And the very best scenes involving the adult Hugh, the character, um, I transposed and rewrote slightly to suit a 12-year-old kid, and they worked even better, especially the one where he goes down in the, in the mine disaster to look for his father, who's trapped down below. And in scenes like this, director Ford showed his mastery of screen emotion. As many times as I've seen that film, I really am astonished at the performance that he got out of me because I never remember him directing, which, of course, is the shrewdest piece of direction you can imagine. He just played me like a harp. A really amazing experience. There were never more than two takes on anything. There were very little rehearsal, no retakes. The film was made in nine weeks and released, I would think, maybe six or seven weeks later, very, very quickly. Nobody wanted it, really, and then it was a huge success. If you had to describe this film in one word, what would the one word be? I can only think of beautiful. It was a beautiful, beautiful picture. A masterpiece never ages. It's just as warm, just as sad, just as... It's such a magnificent movie of, of, of a mag about a magnificent family. And it's the kind of film that can make you cry no matter how many times you've seen it before. Now, the bad news is it is not available on... Danny, I'm home. Oh, Ma, what are you doing home so early? In Only the Lonely, John Candy must deal with Maureen O'Hara, a very domineering mother. Candy's problem is keeping Mom from learning about his romance with Ali Sheedy. <clears throat> well, it's a gentler form of comedy in this. Uh, the comedy comes out of the situation. It comes out of the awkwardness of his uh, um, inability to, to talk to her. Reasons why you can't go out with me on Saturday. You're seeing somebody else. No. You're having your wisdom teeth pulled. You have to lube your car? Only the Lonely was shot in Chicago. Candy's style on location is work hard, but have fun. If we really break down what we're doing as actors, I mean, it's a pretty good gig. Oh, and uh, why not sit back and enjoy it? I mean, I, I, I've worked with some people that just, they take it a little too seriously, and, you know, they get all stressed out, and it's, it's not healthy. The movie marks co-star Maureen O'Hara's return to the screen after an absence of 20 years. She found Candy an actor who can do it all. Tears and laughter go together 
and he can make you laugh, but he can also make you cry. And he's a fine, fine actor. She's got no breast. Did she have some sort of an operation? She's fine. It's her dress. It's just a little big on top, that's all. Ali Sheedy is Candy's girlfriend and also an assistant you, mortician. Uh, did you mean him to look like uh, Clark Gable? Yeah. 